still the first elected fee Muslim female in the entire United States. So Dr. Hawkins, could you please come to the, to the stage uh, with the plaque presentation <laughs> with Dr. Khan. Well, the plaque reads, in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful, Interfaith Institute of the Islamic Center of Long Island, Westbury, New York, presents this award to Dr. Horatia Hawkins in recognition of your courageous, embodied solidarity. Before I finish this, I need Dr. Butts up here. And solidarity with Muslim women and for your interfaith activism, October 8, 2016, Muharram 7, 1438. We just started our new year, 1438. So, In Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 135, it says, O who you believe, stand out firmly for justice as witness to God, even as against yourselves, or your parents, or your kin, and whether it be against rich or poor, for God can best protect them. You are living that verse. We admire you for your courage, for your frankness, and I had the pleasure and honor of uh, spending some time with Larisha last night, and she really is a special human being. God bless you. And here our keynote speaker. Dr. Calvin Butts III is one of America's foremost spiritual leaders and educators. He is president of the State University of New York at Old Westbury and a pastor of the nationally renowned Abyssinian Baptist Church in the city of New York. There's a long history of Abyssinia and Muslims. When they were being persecuted, they went to Abyssinia. So there we may have to come to heart. <laughs> and uh, he is widely known for his accomplishments on behalf of social justice, civil rights, economic development, and education. You can read his longer bio in the handout you have. He is also the founder and chairman of the Abyssinian Development Corporation, a community-based nonprofit organization that is responsible for $600 million in housing and commercial development in Harvard. Dr. Parks earned his bachelor's in philosophy from Morehouse, a master of divinity degree in church history from Union Theological Seminary, and doctor of ministry in church and public policy. Now on a personal note, our fine line first met Dr. Butts when he moved to Long Island and Governor Pataki appointed him as the president of the State University. And uh, I was honored to serve on the Old Westbury uh, Foundation Board for many years. And I come to know him reasonably well. He is a friend, a mentor, advisor. And when I approached him with a request to consider being the uh, trustee for the institute, no questions. Go ahead. And that was a big boost for me personally. His unqualified, quick, affectionate, affirmative response was the jump start we needed. So it was no, just natural for me to re-invite him as the first keynote speaker at our awards dinner. And his presentation topic is very intriguing. For whosoever, who, for whoever is not against us, is for us. I want to share with you a scripture that comes from the Bible, the Gospel of Mark, and it's in the ninth chapter, and it's uh, oh, 38th uh, verse and following. It says, And John answered him, saying, Master, 
We saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followed us not. And we told him to stop because he was not one with us. But Jesus said, Jesus said, forbid him not, for there is no one which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. For the one that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, that one shall not lose their reward. Islam recognizes Jesus as one of the prophets. And so therefore what you do in the name of Allah, you also do in Jesus' name. And anyone who does any good work in the name of Jesus, or in the name of Allah, who sees Jesus as a prophet, is not against him, but for him. And therefore, I stand with you in solidarity in the name of Jesus. And that is, for me, what is most important. Listen. ISIS is a terrorist organization. There's no question about that. They really have no firm religious group or faith. They claim Islam, but should not be identified with Islam. And the pervasive ignorance that sweeps across our society today, meaning the United States of America, that seeks to identify a terrorist organization with a faith and therefore paint with a broad brush across the faith simply reveals to us the deep insecurities and fear and the cover up of lies that have been perpetuated across the centuries that harm America today. You cannot associate ISIS with Islam any more than you can associate the Ku Klux Klan with Christianity. This is, this is, this is. The first name was the Christian Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. They wore a cross on their robes with a drop of the blood of Jesus in the center. It's a terrorist organization that haunted people of color. And the hijab is similar to my complexion. It easily identifies you. And so therefore you become the target of the hatred that is pervasive among some in this nation. And Richard Pryor, since my dear beloved sister office made the crassness so, so real for us. <coughs> Richard Pryor would say to Muslims, and he was one of our most uh, insightful sounds, that you are, and I use his quote, the sand news. And so therefore, we have to understand that those of us who believe in the high moral ideals that come down from Allah through Christ and through the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him forever. We're not against each other. We're with each other. We're united. That's why Jesus told his disciples, say we're ragtag, but you guys. They didn't understand. They're like you and me. The master was divine to sin. And he had to tell them, look, John, let's take it. Why are you against these guys? They're doing good. They're for us. They're with us. We're united. We're one. Remember, Jesus, the woman at the well was a Samaritan. The centurion with a sick servant. He said, I tell people to go, they go. I tell them to come, they come. He was outside of the synagogue, but he gave money to build the synagogue. He gave money, huh? 
to care for the poor. And he wasn't even religious. But Jesus did what he asked him to do. So, when you look at me, I'm your brother. I'm a Muslim when I have to be. I'm Jewish when I have to be. I'm Christian when I have to be. I can call God Allah. I can call God Jehovah. And I can see God through Jesus Christ. I can't get hung up in that. Because that separates us. And what we need is the unity under one God. Now, I may have a job Monday morning. I'm not sure. I will invite Reverend Tom Goodyear to send us off across the room for some nice refreshments with a good prayer. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for the good earth that you have given us to share. We give thanks for all the varied peoples of this earth that you have given us to get to know and love you. We're grateful especially for the way in which your earth brings forth food for all the farmers that have helped to raise it, for those who have picked the crops, transported them, and prepared them, that we might share them together. May you work through all of those people to feed your world. May you work through all of us to be a blessing to the lives of others. So may it be. Amen.